This is E.T. Just kidding, this is E.T. That is Mac from 1988's Mac and Me, an arguably blatant ripoff of the Spielberg classic. Mac and Me is infamously hated, with only 5% on Rotten Tomatoes compared with E.T.'s 99. But how did two movies with essentially the same premise end up being so polarized? The answer lies in an element of story structure that goes back hundreds of years. In fact, it's so important, it might be the reason that stories exist. So let's see where they went wrong. This is Real Breaker by Plotwell. Even though both these movies are about a kid finding an alien and hiding it, the plots have some key differences. First, in E.T., Elliot is trying to help E.T. return home, whereas in Mac and Me, Eric is trying to reunite Mac with his alien family. Secondly, in E.T., Elliot doesn't succeed until the end of the movie, whereas Eric finds Mac's family at about the three-quarter mark. This three-quarter mark is super important. In E.T., this is when E.T. dies and comes back to life. In Mac and Me, this is when Eric finds Mac's family pretty much dead and brings them back to life. These moments are the core of why these two movies got such different ratings. And in order to understand them, we'll need to know what these moments are doing and why they're in stories in the first place. Let's go back 200 years. A little book gets published called Children's and Household Tales, or the name you might know it as, Grimm's Fairy Tales. Since then, we've seen these stories in many forms, but this book includes characters like Cinderella, Rapunzel, Rumpelstiltskin, and more. And one thing nearly universal to fairy tales are morals, the lessons these tales are trying to teach us. As an example, here's Little Red Riding Hood in the movie adaptation of Into the Woods, a musical by genius Stephen Sondheim. On the surface, this story is about a little girl who meets a wolf. But the reason that the story has lasted generations is because of what the story is actually about. The moral, be wary around strangers. Just because someone seems friendly, it doesn't mean they are trustworthy. Or as Sondheim put it, nice is different than good. Arguably, these moments are the reason stories exist. They help us make decisions and navigate our world. They teach us how to get the things we want. Want to find the love of your life? Watch a few Hallmark movies, a bunch of which we broke down in a previous video, and you'll learn to value people instead of your career. And when you look at movies, there is usually one spot where the lesson is front and center. It's a moment we call the inner gateway. The inner gateway comes around the three-quarter mark and it splits Act 2 and Act 3. It shows the main character undergoing an epiphany and or recommitting to their goal. Here's Moana when Moana sings, and the call isn't out there at all, it's inside me. This is her epiphany, realizing she's grown into a leader, and singing, that come what may, I know the way. As she dives down to retrieve the heart of Tefiti, we understand the lesson of the story. Though our leaders may leave us, their lessons will help us grow into leaders ourselves. The inner gateway is also normally a tearjerker. Our Moana example is case in point, but here's Die Hard as another example when John McClane asks Powell to tell his wife he loves her. John's wife, not Powell's wife, that would be weird. Or sometimes, like in the Spongebob Squarepants movie, it's a literal tearjerker, as Spongebob and Patrick cry and embrace their childishness, something we broke down in a different video. You can think of the inner gateway as the heart of the movie, what the story is truly about. So what are these moments in E.T. and in Mac and Me? Well, in E.T., this moment comes when E.T. dies. Elliot is left alone to say goodbye and says one of the movie's most heart-wrenching lines, E.T., I love you. And that profession of love brings E.T. back to life, much to our and Elliot's surprise. Contrast that with Mac and Me, when Eric's brother finds the alien family in a cave. They're extremely dehydrated and barely alive. Eric and his friends rush in and give the aliens something to drink. This rehydrates them just in time, and Mac is reunited with his family. When you look at the differences in these two scenes, it starts to become pretty clear why one works and the other doesn't. E.T. certainly checks off the tearjerker box and delivers us a strong message. But what is the message in Mac and Me? What is it telling us about how to live our lives? In other words, why the heck are we watching this movie? In E.T. we learn about the power of love. What love means to a child, how love transcends differences, and how love can heal. That's a pretty powerful and universal message. But in Mac and Me, the only thing we get from the inner gateway are some nice product shots, which this movie is full of. So why did one movie get a 5% and the other a 99? It's all about the heart of each movie. In E.T., it's love. In Mac and Me, it's Coca-Cola. So where did Mac and Me go wrong? Unlike Spielberg's masterpiece, which centers its story around love, Mac and Me's biggest mistake was omitting a worthwhile inner gateway. Where most movies have a strong moment at the three-quarter mark, Mac and Me didn't, and without a clear lesson we can understand, the movie ends up feeling meaningless. So it's no surprise it got a 5% rating. After all, who wants to watch a movie with no heart? Because at that point, you're just going through the motions. Yeah, Simon says. All right, Simon, Simon says, says yeah. Yeah. Simon. Put your hands on your head. All right. Hands on your head. 
Yeah, that's right. On your head. Here we go.